Hello, ako si Pia Renada at welcome sa The Green Report, which is Rappler's podcast on the environment and people whose decisions impact the world around us. And um, with us today, this is our sixth episode. And if napapansin nyo, no, your usual host, CJ si Hieronymo, is not the host for this episode, but um, it is myself, Pia Renada, Rappler's senior reporter, and um, my co-host, Ralph Rivas. So Ralph will now introduce himself. Go, Ralph. Hi everyone. So this is my first time dito sa show na to. So daming dapat pag-usapan especially now that uh, may bagong administration, may bagong president, bagong cabinet secretaries and uh, we really got to talk about the uh, their uh, policies at uh, kung ano yung track record nila. So um, this sixth episode on the Green Report will be all about certain appointments in the Marcos administration that have very big impact on um, the environment and sustainability. So speaking as Rappler's reporter covering the environment, uh, pag-uusapan natin t- today, number one, si Environment Secretary Tony Yulo Loizaga, while Ralph Rivas will talk about the appointment of Popo Letilia, who is the new Energy Secretary under the Marcos administration. So, um, it i- divide naman into two yung episode na to para mas maayos. So, yung first part, no, will be, ako, I'll be, I'm really interested in uh, Ralph's Secretary, si Secretary Lutilia, and uh, maraming issues surrounding the environment, the the energy beat, energy sector, um, and then the second half will involve Ralph asking me, so parang turn tables naman na uh, intervene naman ako ni Ralph on environments dun sa environment department. So, um, simulin na natin, no, Ralph? So, actually, yung pinaka siguro um, interesting bit, yung pambungad na development na nangyari nung in-announce yung appointment or nomination ni Secretary Lutilia was um, really the the clarity around this appointment. Like, um, kasi may mga uh, corrections na binigay, clarifications binigay yung, yung Malacanang na kahit in-announce yung name niya, di ba, parang may sinabi na hindi pa pala final because of certain issues around um, the environment, the, the energy law. So, Ralph, can you give us maybe just a, a run-through of ano yung issue exactly with yung appointment ni Secretary Lutilia? Yeah, kasi uh, actually, P, nung... Uh... Nakakatawa nga eh, kasi when I started writing about his profile and uh, you know when the news broke uh hina- naghanap agad ako ng stories and uh yung past stories and his past pa- policies and then uh, nung magpapasa na ako ng story ah, parang oh my god parang <laughs> uh, teka lang pala parang uh, nominee diba I think that was the term diba parang nominee lang pala muna siya before uh, at, while they look up kung pwede nga ba talaga siya Kasi uh, yung the law kasi that created the energy department states that no officer, uh, external auditor, legal counsel, or any private company or enterprise na dapat hindi ka involved into the uh, business of energy uh, within two years after exit. So parang kailangan uh, nag-resign ka muna two years after bago ka ma-appoint. Well, I, I, uh, most likely this uh, provision in the uh, energy law uh, is to uh, prevent uh, people having vested interest uh, become an energy secretary. But at the same time, uh, it's also very limiting, right? Diba? Parang uh, kung kailangan mo ng experts, saan ka hahanap ng ano? So that, that, that's, a, that's a very uh, long discussion in itself, no? Pero actually, uh, nagsabi na yung uh, may... May sinabi na ang Department of Justice on this, no? Parang basically sinasabi niya na uh, Mr. Lutilia uh, is not an uh, not part of uh, the avoidis avoidis power. Sorry, hindi ko pala nabanggit kanina, no? Uh, Mr. Lutilia is an independent director of uh, avoidis power. So ano bang sinasabi pag uh, independent director? Basically, sinabi ng Department of Justice uh, sui generis yan. Ibig sabihin... Uh, uh, technically, hindi ka part of the company, although you advise the company on certain matters, but you're not part of the company. You don't own shares of it. So, yun, basically, the Department of Justice cleared him na. And uh, actually, just uh, this weekend, no, yung Department of Energy, no, the Viber Group of Reporters, uh, addressed him as the Department of Energy Secretary Designate. So it seems na um, he's going to get the position no uh, mm. now that uh nalinawan na yung uh, isyong yan. So Ralph, may na bang oath taking si Mr. Lotilia so far? No, uh 
I have not kasi unfortunately no nung nakita ko rin sa Viber group yung, group, yung pagka-address sa kanya as a na as a as a designate uh he, tas, he tested positive for covid so mukhang uh he's not gonna attend the uh, face to face mm-hmm. muna no and uh we're hoping for his fast recovery no uh it seems na uh hindi naman malala yung symptoms niya uh but yeah uh it's it might take uh, a couple more weeks for him to uh physically meet his team sa department of energy mm-hmm. okay so um so far wala pang any is there any indication maybe from his background or yung kanyang past that maybe points toward a kind of policy or angle direction that he will probably have the deal he take under his helm Actually, Pia, uh, he has been uh, DOE secretary from 2005 to 2007. So, hindi na bago sa kanya yung position. Mm-hmm. And uh, based on uh, what I read, no, past news reports, uh, medyo holistic yung kanyang approach when it comes to energy. Kasi when he was energy secretary, he faced an oil crisis. Sobrang taas ng uh, oil prices. I mean, di ba? Parang very deja vu like what we're experiencing now. Pero uh, uh, yung nangyari kasi before, the economy then was not very uh, good as it is now. I mean, the economy is kind of a mess right now because of the pandemic. Pero before, medyo ipit sa pera yung, uh, yung government. It could not even afford cash dole outs and uh, sobrang taas rin ng uh, palita ng peso and dollar. So his solution was actually... Uh, to to trim uh, use basically uh, uh, he urged lawmakers to pass this uh, Marcos era law uh, issued way back in 1979 yung tinatawag na batasang pambansa or BP 73 uh, energy basically energy conservation measures to no instead of creating new generation plants so uh, Uh, among the uh, proposals was a four-day work week for government offices and uh, yung mga agency, government agencies to shut down their air conditioners for three hours a day. So, I mean, these types of measures, no, parang quirky, mong may isip, but it makes sense. Di ba? Kung, uh, kung energy mataas yung, efficiency. Yeah, energy efficiency, not just on the uh, production, but on the usage. So may 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 mga ganong uh, proposals and uh, also this uh, BP73 uh ito yung interesting sa akin eh uh, prohibited the use of government vehicles on Sundays legal holidays and uh, outside regular yeah. hours oh, So man. So diba parang uh, it's also a uh, a way to uh, parang bawas-bawasan yung corruption kasi uh, to do this no Uh, kung may government vehicle ka, yung official na yon ay kailangan may trip ticket. At dapat yung trip ticket na yon ilalagay sa windshield. So, I mean, these uh, these are measures na uh, goes beyond just the generation of energy. And uh, it, ito pa, Pia, I think ito yung naging controversial no uh, during his mm-hmm. term. Kasi uh, he also, uh, this, this BP, no, also had proposed a fuel rationing program during periods of tight supply. So uh, basically, uh, the private sector uh, was averse to this idea kasi malilimitahan yung quality and quantity of their products na ibibenta to consumers. But again, uh, in a nutshell, uh, may, ganong, may ganon siyang proposal. So it's interesting kung uh, i-apply ba niya to uh, the second time around. So, Ralph, given this new appointment slash nomination, no, any challenges that you expect um, the new secretary to face as head of DOE? Well, other than this oil crisis right now, no, na sobrang mahal and uh, inflation really skyrocketing because of the high oil prices, uh, an energy crisis. Uh, ito, uh, data from uh, Policy Group Institute of Climate and Sustainable Cities or ICSC. Uh, earlier warned about uh, plus possible blackouts in Luzon uh, as early as uh, the third quarter, or actually the second quarter of 2022, uh, or a deficit of uh, 1,335 megawatts. 
So, uh, what does that mean? No, kapag uh, very thin yung supply. Uh, the worst case scenario there is that there will be 14 weeks of red alerts over Luzon uh, or over the Luzon grid. And uh, maybe even the Visayas grid uh, data says, says here, uh, red alert status of up to 49 weeks. So meaning kapag red alert status, uh, the the uh, demand for energy uh, outpaces supply. So talagang uh, yun, uh, with this energy crisis, saan tayo hahanap ng uh, energy? And uh, how do we make uh, our energy sources uh, sustainable? Um, green projects, uh, sexy na ba to for the private sector? Uh, as we know, the private sector is heavily invested in oil and coal. So, I mean, lots of challenges, lots of balancing acts. And uh, it's really uh, quite interesting kung ano ang magiging uh, policy niya as we have yet to hear kung ano yung plano niya for the energy sector. Hmm. Ano kayong take or may indications ba dun sa, sa understanding or appreciation and maybe um, yung supportive ba siya dun sa nuclear energy? Kasi si President Marcos, narinig din natin from the campaign that he actually voiced openness to reopening the nuclear energy power plant in Bataan, which alam natin, legacy ng tatay niya, di ba? Parang um, it's a controversial legacy kasi major white elephant siya, di ba? Parang hindi siya natuloy kahit ang dami ng billion, billions of pesos were spent on the project. So um, any indication? Because I remember covering the Duterte administration that C. Alfonso Cusi, the energy secretary, was really championing nuclear power and even meeting with mga Russian investors on this, Russian um, experts on nuclear energy. So what do we know on that? Uh, I have not read anything, uh, any statements of him about uh, uh, nuclear energy, no. But uh, again, uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, opening uh, a can of worms, di ba? Parang yun nga as you mentioned, parang it's an uh, white elephant. And uh, I don't know if na resolve na ba talaga nila yung issue on uh, the power plant uh, being built on a fault line. So nakakatakot oh, yun, di ba? Oh, oh, and uh, I, what I suppose, uh, uh, naging challenge din uh, to Marcus Senior was uh, yung uh, when pushing for nuclear energy, you know, because of uh, what happened in Japan before, di ba? Mm. Parang I mean that that's up to up to this day. Takot yung mga tao pagdating when when you talk about uh, nuclear energy. So um, again, it's not just an issue on. Uh, being able to uh, supply energy, but it's the, the, the safety as well, diba? So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, quite interesting kung ano yung uh, magiging position niya on that. How about Ralph on joint exploration? Kasi alam ko yung DOE rin, syempre, yung may in charge dyan, diba? Like assessing the, the um, proposals of companies to explore, lala na in the West Philippine Sea. And we know that um, the Malampaya gas field, for example, ma maubos na siya in a few years, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, another issue dyan yung, uh, I mean, energy security issue din siya. So, uh, may, may ano, ano kaya mga challenges that await him with re in regards to this issue of exploring for oil? Actually, Pia, that's more of a, uh, that's more political, no? Parang uh, yun yung, yung, yung dispute in the West Philippine Sea. I mean, uh, there's no question that uh, there's a lot of resources there. But again, it's a very... Uh, uh, that's something that uh, not just the two of us no, should be watching, but uh, all the other reporters in Rappler, no, kung ano yung magiging uh, move uh, ni uh, President Marcos uh, in relation to China. But going back to the issue, no, uh, when it comes to joint exploration, uh, I, ako interested akong malaman on how uh, the, the new secretary will uh, go about the issue of Malampaya because as you know, uh, the dispute of uh, Dennis Uy and the selling of the shares, I mean, that's, I mean, di ba, parang medyo, uh, medyo complicado, basically, uh, to put it very uh, simply. So, uh, I'm interested to know kung, uh, how he would uh, treat this issue, how he would uh, manage the interests of both the private companies which have the uh, capabilities to uh, drill this oil and uh, bring uh, what's left of Malampaya no? and uh, the interests of the people and as well as the uh, uh, how it would 
how the the optics would be uh, at the uh, international scale, di ba? Hmm. Na ko din kasi the, one of the last things na ginawa ni Duterte before stepping down was linif niya yung ban on exploring sa West Philippine Sea disputed areas. A ban that was in place since I think 2012 or 2013. Dahil nga dun sa nangyaring pag-file natin ng case against China um, under the Aquino administration. So, yun, parang, ewan ko kung if Marcos, actually part of this is really up to Marcos himself, eh, no? to whether or not um, magpapursue talaga siya ng oil exploration in that very sensitive area of the West Philippine Sea when marami namang areas na pwedeng explore na hindi ganun ka-controversial or parang, di ba, parang how do you navigate around that? Tsaka si Duterte even let go, inabandon na nga niya yung ano, eh, joint exploration with China kasi parang parang may air of ano eh, na give up na lang siya kasi masyado mahirap i-navigate yung um yung constitution diba how do we make sure china will explore under our terms and acknowledge our rights over that area so yeah sobrang um di ko lang alam kung good luck na lang kay secretary lotilia how to manage that as you said very political um but also very economic issue on um energy security uh yeah Actually, uh, actually, PS still speaking on the on on the issue of the West Philippine Sea, no uh, environmental implications, di ba? And dami nang nasira ng ano ng pagreclaim ng China dun sa 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 territory. So I mean, I'm curious then uh, how the uh, next environment secretary would uh, would would address that. And I mean, uh, di ba? I mean, sira na eh. So I mean, how? Ano pang pwede natin gawin kaya? Hmm. Sige, siguro last question na lang for me, Ralph. No? Kasi um, actually it's more rewinding dun sa first issue na pinag-usapan natin about yung um, sinasabi mong vested interest that the energy law is trying to guard against, um, especially with appointments to the energy department. So itong issue of um, vested interest, can you just remind um, the viewers or explain it better um, to us so we can understand the kind of technical aspect of it na kung bakit importante na mag-guard yung position against vested interest? Like, why is it an issue for DOE and not with other departments, for example? Basically, Pia, the bottom line, money. So, I mean, if you, uh, uh, kung, kung dati kang uh, official ng isang energy company, and here here comes, you become the uh, the energy secretary, uh, diba, I mean, ang daming, ang daming implications that alone, eh, na parang, uh, you're you're given the uh, certain no not not just certain but definite advantages diba if you're uh, and every move that you do in the department of energy mukhang laging may bahay diyan babalik at babalik yan sa dati mong ginawa kang function so it's i think it's the it's best uh, for both that the, the person whoever becomes the uh, the energy secretary and uh, the Filipino people na dapat uh, walang vested interest yung uh, incoming energy secretary but at the same time uh, it uh, yung yung tingin ko diyan is uh, saan ka naman kukuha ng uh, energy secretary na walang vested interest but is quite knowledgeable on energy diba so it, 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 it makes it these are valid questions din. So, saan, saan ba dapat siya? Uh, is there a uh, particular sector na pwede siyang uh, kukunin? Uh, can it be an academic or someone who's an advocate of a, a renewable energy? Or I mean, but again, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I hope the audience gets the idea on how uh, interesting this question is. Pero, uh, but again, the, the logic of the law is that uh, it's basically to protect the, the interests of the Filipino people. Okay, so yun yung first half ng ating podcast, all about Energy Secretary Dutilia and what we can expect from him. So ano tayo, turn over naman tayo, um, to it, turning the tables to Ralph, who will now um, host the, this part to ask me about you, Environment Secretary. Aha, the tables have turned. <laughs> so... But- so the, yeah, the the new energy uh, the the new environment secretary your thoughts and uh uh I think you you were able to interview her before diba Interesting ah because when I first heard her name mentioned as ni nominate na siya 
parang talaga na, na curious ako na, uy, parang sobrang familiar siya. And pati yung mukha niya, like her, she really looked very familiar to me. And that was already a sign to me, even before researching her, no? Na parang, uy, baka, it seems that this is really a person who is steeped in the environment circles. Kasi kinalo ko siya. And I covered environment like six years ago, which means if I knew her, she's been there much longer than like six years, di ba? So, Um, that was a, a promising sign for me. And true enough, nung nag-message ako ng mga environmental groups, environmental advocacy groups, um, and even mga academe uh, studying environmental science and whatnot, they were all very uh, very effusive in their praise for her. And um, kita mo talaga na in her background, she's really had decades of experience working um, in environment, but in the, in the scientific academic side. So hindi siya activist i wouldn't i wouldn't describe her as an activist but more of like an academe um uh someone who's written reports publications uh na all about uh climate change and yung disaster resilience kaya dun sa story ko tinawag ko siyang disaster re- resilience expert kasi uh, he she was executive director for manila observatory for um almost 10 years and then marami siyang experience also in groups that are all about improving resilience yung capacity building among government, private sector, on how to make communities more adaptive to climate change. So it was a really uh, interesting choice para sa akin na pinili yung isang person from the academe who has decades of experience and is quite well known in those circles. At um, for me, no, parang kasi looking at the past appointees of the environment department, parang may, may mga military, di ba? Or may mga activists. Um, mostly they were political appointees, so they were uh, politicians to begin with na uh, siguro in a point because of loyalty to the chief executive. But ito yung one of the few uh, parang talagang academ- academia yung pinanggalingan niya. So yun, interesting appointment on the at the onset pa lang. And uh, remind lang natin yung viewers and listeners natin that uh, Tony Yulo Loizaga is not Tony Gonzaga kasi yun yung, yun yung unang <laughs> pag- ibang, ano, sa ibang comments. no So si Tony Yulo Loizaga is the new... Uh, uh DNR secretary so uh top issues pia ano ba yung uh sa tingin mong uh first few challenges niya as uh DNR secretary top issue talaga mining for me yun yung talagang when you say DNR kasi isang isang red flag issue yun na parang ano gagawin mo about mining and alam talaga natin nung Duterte time naging uh, very controversial issue siya because in the first years of the Duterte administration right may dami regulations a crackdown ni former, the late Gina Lopez on the mining companies. And then um, a few years later, uh, when she passed away, when she, you know, like she wasn't um, confirmed for the role, right? Uh, talagang nagback measure 180 degree turn because the new energy secretary, the new environment secretary, si General Roy Simatu, parang started becoming more uh, open or, you know, not as rah, 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 of course, as Gina Lopez. And yun, in the end, na, na lift nga yung ban on open pit, pit mining, which disappointed a lot of environment groups. Um, and nakita talaga, talaga natin na kung baga parang mas naging may harmonious relationship between the economic team and the environment secretary when Gina Lopez left the department. So uh, it will be interesting to see kung ano na naman yung dynamics under uh, Secretary uh, Loizaga, who, by the way, uh, uh, is supposed to be taking his, her oath today, um, today, July 19, sa Malacanang. So, di ba, parang magiging mas friendly ba siya sa economic team, more open to concessions for the economy or will she be kind of um more of an activist person na talagang no uh higpitan muna and then compromise a bit down the road um or will she strike a balance will it will she be more like a give and take kind of secretary and from the indications uh from people i've spoken with who've worked with her for years no she's more of you know, the latter but middle ground parang she she knows how to deal with different interests. Since hindi siya super rara activist, diba? Mas science-based siya, mas academe siya. Um, she's also been in positions where she deals with groups na maraming different agenda, like business sector, government, um, scientists. So um, as executive director ng MO, tsaka as a member pa nga, president of the National Resilience Council, meron siyang ganung role. Parang medyo referee siya, na hindi siya representative of one particular side, but she's supposed to kind of like um, balance and get all of them on the same table, which I think is good because in, as Environment Secretary, talagang ano siya balancing act, kasi diba, you have to deal with the, the activists na sobrang vocal. Sa Philippines, we have an extremely vocal and passionate uh, green NGO sector. Um, but at the same time, diba, yung government natin also needs to strike a balance with economy kasi especially now with the pandemic, talagang may pressure on 
all the all the portfolios and sec in and agencies now we have to look for more revenue and one way to get revenue right is from mining from all of these um activities that could also harm the environment if hindi siya regulated well mm. now uh, i mean you've written lots of uh stories on uh, mining uh, before you covered uh, President Duterte. No? So uh, can you walk us through some of the uh, m- the usual themes pagdating sa mining issues? Uh, and uh, ito, I'm always curious about this. No? What comprises uh, good mining, ba? good practices? Parang yung sin- as at least for the environmentalists, no? yung mga groups that are trying to advocate responsible mining, they want number one transparency. So we can have mining, but the the actors have to be able to publish um, things like earnings, kung saan sila, yung operations nila, yung extent of operations, and uh, ano yung mga, uh, are they open to consultations with groups that are affected immediately by their operations? Kung wari, mga indigenous peoples na um, sila yung, they live nearby and they benefit from the natural resources kung saan sila nagmamine. That Dapat open sila to kind of a grievance mechanism if magka-abuse, like what if ma- Ma, madumihan yung river kung saan sila nagfi-fish, for example. Um, kailangan may, may very clear um, acknowledgement of the impact uh, they're making on the environment and ways to deal with that, like to help with th- those impacts, like planting more trees um, or helping to recover certain areas na, na, na denuded. Pag iniwan nila yan, di ba? Hindi lang pwedeng camp out, alas na, move to another site. Dapat may efforts to rehabilitate the area. Things like that. So I think yun yung call ng mga mga environmental groups and of course diba parang even naman in our mining laws may naman regulations talaga dyan. and it's more of like to crack down better pag may violations so uh eh, madalas nangyayari may law nga tayo pero hindi naman enforce yung yung mga penalties for the violations so um that's one thing mm-hmm. pero isa pa rin rin palang challenges no i forgot mm-hmm. to mention um ng environment secretary yung syempre yung ating climate change plans climate change planning kasi Ano naman to eh, talagang talking point to every administration. The Philippines is the most climate vulnerable country. It's, that's a kind of a, a refrain that we keep repeating because nga, um, hindi pa rin tayo nag-improve uh, on certain things like on flooding, like how do we make sure that um, communities are not in the way of, of disasters and how do we help farmers, lalo na farmers, diba, deal with a warmer climate where yung rice crops natin, extremely vulnerable yan to, to um, water shortage. And that water shortage can happen pag may climate change, diba? From impacts of climate change. So, um, yun, how, ka, kaya ba ni, ni um, Secretary Loizaga na maging mas active sa climate planning and especially yung accounting of her, of her carbon emissions? Oh, sorry, si Ralph is technical problems. But anyway, I will just continue. Um, yun, so uh, that's one issue that we that I think Secretary Loizaga has before her. Um, pero marami pa yan, eh, kasi environment nga is so is so big. Um, and for example, like, how do we take care of our natural national parks, given that uh, we, we can get a lot of resources and we can get a lot of um, profits from tourism. Pero kung yung national parks na yan, um, may illegal logging or, di ba, parang hindi siya rin respect ng mga illegal miners, di ba? How do we preserve those resources and those natural wonders for the next generation? Mm. Now, ako, curious naman ako kung anong gagawin ng next environment secretary sa Manila Bay. Kasi, di ba? Uh, yun yung talagang naging theme, di ba? Parang uh, uh, the Manila Bay clean up, things like that. And then there's Dolomite Beach na, by the way, talagang biglang sumulpot na lang kasi biglang nung when I uh, covered DNR, no? Uh, yung unang question dyan was the plan. Tapos, we asked for a detailed plan. Medyo bullet points lang and uh, three pages of paper yung binigay ng DNR sa atin. And then, uh, during the pandemic, biglang dumating tong Dolomite Beach na parang wala naman to sa usapan. So, uh, ikaw ba, Pia, uh, when it comes to these, ano, uh, Manila Bay and, uh, sige, isama na rin natin yung uh, issue ng uh, yung sa Boracay, di ba? Talagang uh, medyo clenched fist yung ano talaga yung approach si President Duterte dyan na lockdown, things like that. So, uh, ikaw, any, uh, would you, would you want uh, this radical approach to happen again? I mean, my outcome naman, but again, the, mm-hmm. the, the consequences and the uh, 
how we got there, diba? Parang, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated picture. Feel ko dun sa Dolomite, ha? Feel ko lang, ito lang yung kutub ko. From what I'm getting from people who work with Secretary Luizaga, hindi niya type yung ganun. It seems, mm-hmm. ha? Kasi parang they're all saying, expect that all her decisions will be based on science. Expect that she will be listening to um, scientists. And we know that maraming mga scientists and experts na talagang nag- up in arms with the Dolomite um, beach, diba? they were saying it wasn't very um, um, supported by science, that may mga impact pa siya sa, sa natural environment, kasi diba, you're introducing basically a new element into this into this ecosystem or environment. Um, so uh, I, I, would, I would say that at the very least, si Loizaga would be more open to criticism like that, like she would be more accessible to people with concerns like that, kasi nga, she moves around these circles, so um, hindi siya like stuck in her bubble because she precisely like cultivated this network around her and it would be very strange if she would ignore that network um, while she's secretary. Tapos yung dun sa enforcement, no, agree talaga ako na nung time ni Duterte, post Gina Lopez, um, actually even during Gina Lopez in a way, enforcement was a real theme sa DNR. And it's not naman that surprising kasi DNR is really supposed to regulate the that's part of their functions. Pero kasi siguro mas naging litaw yung, yung enforcement aspect um, under si Matu and Duterte. Kasi nga, number one, si Matu is a general. Like, he's a retired um, um, military chief. So, uh, ba that in itself kind of parang, oh, okay, we know why he's appointed kasi gusto niya down the line, may crackdown. And true enough, diba, pag dun sa Manila Bay, nag-crackdown siya sa establishments na, na parang pangit yung sewerge nila sa Boracay, crackdown on establishments na masyadong malapit sa easement or went beyond the easement and um, didn't have good sanitation facilities. So, on the one hand, I, I agree that a crackdown is important. I agree that there has to be enforcement of penalties and punishments against violators. So I think we should preserve naman talaga yung kind of disciplinary approach na for environment um, decisions. But at the same time, no, kailangan din stress equally important yung science-based ba yung mga ginagawa nila. Kasi I had a feeling back in the Duterte's time na, ano eh, parang because si Matu nga is, for, is from that military ethos na obey and just follow um, yung... yung Kumbaga, parang yung priority was speed and the optics of it. Um, and we know science is kind of slow in the sense that kailangan may pag-aaral, may consultation, di ba? Mag-ask on these experts' assessments and those take long. And they're not parang optically, like, hindi siya maganda sa optics na, di ba, hindi siya pang B-roll material na very interesting to see, very visual. It's kind of a, um, a slow approach that happens in, in the background. So I'm hoping that I think a good secretary would combine the two would have a balance of very strict enforcement, but also enforcement that's based on science and based on openness and consultation because environment policies affect so many people, diba? They affect businessmen, they affect um, the people in the beach, the tourists, yung mga, mga, mga naglalaro sa, sa, sa rivers, and so many people, farmers, so kailangan talaga maging open. Hindi pwedeng yung, basta, ito yung gagawin natin, gawin natin, huwag tayo maging open sa iba, huwag tayo mag-consult ng stakeholders. Hindi talaga ganyan yung approach. Kung ganyan yung approach mo as a secretary, you would really get a lot, you would really hear it from the environmental groups and the indigenous peoples groups and all the many um, passionate NGOs. Hmm. And uh, this is her very first uh, political appointment. no? So uh, she faces lots of uh, challenges and ba- lots of balancing acts that uh, she will do for the first time. And uh, I guess yung last question ko is... Uh, uh, your thoughts on uh, on climate change, Pia? Because, uh, of course, uh, uh, Ma'am Loizaga has uh, plenty of experience in the science community. But, uh, again, uh, climate change is not just uh, an issue on science. Parang it's Actually, I would argue it's largely more on uh, businesses, right? So, uh, uh, mm. what anong, anong landscape yung you expect to navigate niya, uh, in pushing for... Uh, climate change measures amid all the uh, business and political interests? I think that si Secretary Loizaga would um, really lean more towards the side of the adaptation angle. Because expert is a resilience, which means she's an expert on the adaptation side of climate change, which means yung how we make communities um, survive the climate impacts. Kasi yung other, other side of the coin dyan is mitigation, which is how do, we, um, make, how do we make sure that we lessen our carbon emissions, which create climate change, which lead to climate change. So 
para sa akin, no, expert na siya dun sa isang side, resilience. So, that's a good thing kasi the Philippines, our biggest issue is really resilience, adaptation. Kasi small emitter naman tayo of emissions eh. But I really think also that um, hindi ko magbabago yung approach niya. Like, kasi nung Duterte time, yung ating main, champ, parang main battle cry was climate justice. Kasi coming from Duterte, na naman parang ayaw niya sa mga, sa mga powerful countries, parang meron siyang medyo chip in his shoulder na he really, every time he has a chance to kind of berate the developing the developed countries he'll take it and climate justice is the perfect like you know thing he can jump on for that for me parang siguro i think that it seems that the market administration will be taking a more economic um angle to it more more of like how do we how do we transition to clean energy for example how do we make sure that our farmers are able to survive climate change and still have good incomes despite climate change so fico mas ganun parang mas technical, mas more of um, how do we, the economic side of it um, compared to the political side of it. Um, and yung maganda kay Tony, Tony uh, Yulo Loizaga is she is already good at um, the side that that's more, yung optics is more out there. Like the, the Philippines, when you, lots of people, when they think of the Philippines, they see Yolanda, they see Leite, Tacloban, yung ravages nun. So um, I think it's good that we have someone who is well versed in addressing those kinds of things uh, and hopefully since marami siyang experience balancing different groups mas ma-harmonize niya yung mga climate policies down the line yung problema kasi now climate change is seen as a bubble issue for many people na climate change environment lang yan but actually climate change affects all departments dapat nga may climate change office in every department eh? kasi diba may impact sa businesses may impact sa electricity sa, sa sa agriculture even sa education i mean diba like when students can't go to school because of there's so many storms and or parang mga dengue, dengue uh, health is a very very much a climate change issue. So I'm hoping that with her political will and her knowledge, mas mas mama mainstream niya yung climate change in government policy. Yeah, and I guess uh, our only wish, no, uh, as journalists, ay maging accessible sila to the media, no. So I'm yeah. really looking to. Uh, the, their first press cons and we got we get to ask them uh the burning questions <laughs> right so there uh, i hope that you mga listeners natin today were able to pick up something from our conversation we're just hoping to enlighten everyone help people understand yung new leaders natin today in the sectors we care about so uh, if you want to continue following raptors coverage on the energy and environment sectors please do follow us um you handle ko ay uh, so Twitter, um, at uh, Pierrenada, at Pierrenada. And you can email me for any tips or leads uh, at pia.renada at raptor.com. Uh, follow me for uh, not just energy, no, for anything about the economy, business, corporate uh, uh, markets, and uh, political economy. Follow me on Twitter at Ralph Rivas. And you can always send us a line if you have suggestions for what the next episode's topic should be. So once again, this has been Pierre Nada and Ralph Rivas for Rappler, and see you again in the next episode of The Green Report. Goodbye.